introduce myself. My name is Darren Bryan. I'm the Alternative Energy uh, Global Business Manager at, uh, at Deck Solar. Uh, the presentation here today is a very short uh, update, really, on uh, who we are at Deck and also what we're doing to drive technology and solar, solar cell screen printing. Deck is a company. Um, we've been around for over 40 years. Uh, 40 seven years, um, so it's been a long time uh, building printing equipment. And uh, we've built a name for ourselves over the years uh, in the electronics industry, um, with numerous uh, industry breakthroughs in many uh, industry se sectors, and um, those including uh, electronics assembly, uh, thick film, and more recently the alternative energies. Uh, within our 40 years, as I said, thick film, um, it has been a market that we've been very involved in and we sold some of the very early systems for solar cell technology over 40 years ago. Building on this, uh, we've extended our knowledge into the fast growing uh, field of alternative energy uh, starting back in 2000-2001 uh, with uh, hydrogen fuel cells uh, working with names such as Rolls-Royce, Johnson Mathe and more recently Bloom Energies in the US. And uh, Deck Sober itself was established as a brand in 2009. As we're seeing, and you guys obviously are all involved, alternative energy is gaining a much wider acceptance globally. And we're seeing that the, the uh, installations of panels are still, even with the market for us uh, and the equipment sector as it is, the actual installations are, are still growing at a, a fairly unprecedented rate annually. Um, because of the overcapacity uh, we're currently seeing in the marketplace, uh, obviously people are trying to, to cut their costs and uh, improve their efficiency is one way of doing this. So our customers uh, are demanding new ideas to, to add value to, to the product and to <coughs> help them to achieve higher efficiencies and reduce the, the cost of their cells and ultimately the cost per watt of the power produced from those cells. So at Deck Solar, we're focused on, on one goal really, and this is to help our customers to create uh, more efficient production lines uh, to not only meet their current uh, requirements and current demands, but also the future challenges of the industry as we move ahead. So why do we need to innovate? Why can't we just sell what we've got today? Um, well, basically, foreign market in we've got some uh, ghosts in there, I think, <laughs> Following the, uh, the market intelligence that we see from various PV industry roadmaps, um, we have a number of drivers to, to our development. Firstly, higher throughput from single lines. Um, if, if you can get more out of, uh, out of the same, then obviously this all goes towards uh, a better uh, cost per, per watt and uh, reducing this overall cost. With new uh, new technologies developing on cells, thinner collector arrays uh, becoming a requirement. Um, we're seeing this for, for various reasons. Um, with selective emitter, we're printing down much, much finer fingers. Uh, also, with uh, the lightly doped emitter cells coming through, again, the, there will be a requirement to, to print thinner and uh, <coughs> narrower uh, arrays of front side contact. In order to achieve this, uh, we're having to look at finer screen meshes um, in order to, to, to print the finer features. And uh, as the, the features get finer and they're printing finer detail, um, this then drives a requirement for cleaning, uh, cleaning of the screen, and also maintaining a cleanliness of the, the incoming uh, wafers from previous uh, processes. Also to drive the, uh, the, the capability of printing uh, narrower fingers but with higher uh, aspect ratios, we're working on uh, processes such as dual print uh, and hybrid screen uh, stencil technologies. These are beginning to gather some momentum and, and almost becoming mainstream uh, with, with some of our customers. And these in turn are delivering uh, a much better uh, aspect ratio of, of height to width therefore reducing the shadow into the front side of the cell while still maintaining the electro electrical conductivity required for the high efficiency cells. Metal Raptor and Selective Emitter are also 
uh, for coming into their own. And again, um, we're having to innovate and develop the equipment to be able to uh, not only deal with the, uh, the, the transfer of paste through the, the, the MWT cells um, from front side to back side, but also with selective emitter to, to cope with the low contrast features uh, that we're typically seeing with most of these selective emitter uh, technologies. And many, many more of the lines that we are shipping into the field um, are for print process. So rather than our standard or the industry standard front side silver, back side silver, back side aluminium, um, we're seeing more lines going over to doing a dual print on the front side, followed by the, the silver and the, the aluminium on the back side. And as people look to increase their output from their facilities, the, the productivity or the output per meter of factory floor space is becoming even more of a, an, an important buying factor. Uh, if you can fit more capacity into the same floor space that you have, uh, then obviously this all drives towards the, the, the cost of manufacture and reducing that cost of manufacture. So everything that we do, uh, we're looking at the uh, effective miniaturization of the lines uh, to produce the same or, or more uh, volumes of output. And finally on their thinner wafer capabilities, um, this seems to have stalled a little bit. Um, there was a big drive to reduce the, the thickness of wafers because of the shortage of silicon. Um, silicon obviously at the moment is not really in such short supply, um, but we are still seeing a drive with many of the, the research institutes that we work with to look at, uh, at thinner wafers. So what are we focusing on? Um, well, our products and processes uh, are all developed to deliver high performance uh, and high accuracies um, to allow our customers to, to take advantage of this and, and maximize uh, the, the current processes and develop new processes such as print and print uh, to achieve high yields, efficiencies, and throughput uh, whilst, as I said, dealing with the uh, thinner wafers. And our innovation is, is really focused in three main areas. Um, to work with our customers to, to increase their efficiency, to further better the, the yield of the lines. I'll give it two minutes to go, so we'll be back. <laughs> and to, to work with the customers to reduce uh, their total cost of, of manufacturing, which in turn will obviously help them to reduce the, the cost of, of, per watt, uh, of the power produced. So how do we at DEC innovate? Um, two, two main uh, avenues really. Uh, we have ongoing R&D programs and partnerships uh, with industry, uh, other industry players, uh, some of you even sitting here I believe, um, and also uh, with institutes a number of the institutes around the world, in Europe and in Asia. Um, and we, by, by participating with these institutes, it, it ensures that we're at the forefront of developing uh, our advanced technologies and processes, uh, and also to keep us aligned when developing new products. Secondly, and maybe even more importantly, is listening to the, what the customer wants. It's very easy to present a customer with a, a stock line. Um, uh, but that really is a compromise. At DEC, we, we, we like to think that we listen to the customers. Uh, we have a committed development team that take, uh, take those requirements and, and turn them into the reality of our future products. One example of this, which we've uh, launched this morning uh, over at our booth in uh, Hall E3, is the Apollo. Um, Apollo is a, a development of our Eclipse uh, uh, family of machines, um, allowing us to, to take a, a single lane um, metallization line and uh, optimize it for today's and tomorrow's future processes, such as the, the low contrast selective emitter type cells, the very, very high accuracy uh, prints required for, for technologies such as the selective emitter. Um, but to take this in a very, very compact, small footprint. Both modular and flexible in the configuration. Um, Apollo, uh, the, the line is, is, we like to think, future-proofed to take into account 
um, not only what we see today, but the new requirements coming through. Um, as I say, everything that we do is, is linked in with the industry roadmaps and the, the future requirements that we see for today. Um, allowing us to, to take advantage of the increasing number of new process developments um, which our customers and the research institutes are, are working on to drive the improvements in, in cell efficiencies. With our research and development, again we're working with a number of, of, uh, of companies um, around the line. I'm here as a, a list of just a few um, where we're developing uh, the, the line to, to, to maximise um, the, the advantage that we can get from these new technologies. Another example of our research and development and, and working with partners I've been working closely with Ferro, uh, the paste manufacturers, uh, with a hot melt product. And we've, uh, we've developed um, basically a, a bolt <coughs> onto the Eclipse platform that allows us to, to run the hot melt product. Up until today, uh, most equipment that had been uh, used for hot melt was very much either lab scale or, or um, adapted um, uh, standard equipment. Here we've actually um, redeveloped um, the, the print head and the associated technologies uh, within the Eclipse uh, platform, um, allowing our customers to, to independently control the screen, squeegee, flood blade, and wafer temperatures independently um, without uh, actually impeding on the, uh, abil uh, the uh, ability of the Eclipse platform. The picture shown here is of a single print module, but for those of you that have seen the Eclipse and, and have seen the platform, these can be ganged together to give us throughput of up to 3,600 wafers per hour uh, with the hot melt uh, solution. And uh, as it says, includes all of the features of the award-winning platform. Quite a novel approach uh, we're looking at with this is to take the hot melt for both front side and rear side silver uh, and sticking with the conventional aluminum backside print. Um, we have the ability to gang three of these printers together to give all three processes in a, a footprint of one and a half by two meters and then feed those wafers straight into a coal fire and furnace. So it's opening up many doors uh, for, for future uh, line configurations. So listening to customers, how do we listen? Um, to listen to a customer, you've got to be close to them. And at DEC, um, we like to think we're as close to our customers as, as we can be. Um, we've got many well-established global support and uh, expertise centers around the world, um, offices in, in various places throughout Asia, uh, the US, and uh, quite heavily across Europe. We also have centers of excellence uh, across three, all three continents, serving our customer base in over 100 countries. And across the, the, the DEC family, we're supporting over 20,000 installations around the world. Um, our uh, support um, with the uh, support engineering and our screen and stencil printing experts has, has won us many awards uh, from many different industries and, uh, and, and many customers. And as a, a demonstration of our ongoing support of the uh, PV industry here in, in China um, very shortly uh, we'll be opening a new technology centre in Suzhou uh, both for, for demonstration and for, for process development uh, with our customers uh, so to say this really reflects the importance to us of, of the China market okay so I say just a very short introduction to, to DEC and uh, the way that we're driving our developments to to help our customers to uh, drive on the, the new products and I'd just like to say thanks for, for listening. Thank you.